Hello again, as you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and today's class is Metal as a Service. M-A-A-S. So we've been doing a number of classes lately on these different services. We've talked about software as a service, we've talked about infrastructure as a service, and we have talked about platform as a service. Now when you're talking about these services, by far the most popular solution out there is software as a service. That is where you basically you go out and you lease software from companies and the software is all run on their servers. So when we're talking about software as a service, think about things like Google Docs. Think about things like Salesforce. The software is not installed on your local computer, it's installed on their servers and you access that somehow, either, either through a web browser or through some type of a terminal connection, something like that. We talked about the infrastructure as a service. Basically, when you're, you're infrastructure, all those things that you would buy and install in your premises, you no longer uh, actually own anymore. So think about your telephone systems. Uh, companies used to spend $50,000 on their telephone system and that telephone system was installed in their premise and they owned it. Now you can get hosted voice over IP solutions such as OnSIP. You get hosted firewall solutions. You can have hosted server rooms. Why have your own servers when you can go to Amazon Web Services and simply spin up a number of virtual services on their platform? So that is infrastructure as a service. We then talked about platform as a service. Platform as a service is where you create your web apps and then you are looking for some place to host them. So the, the, the basic idea is think about a shared hosting web plan. You create your website, you create your web application, and then you simply upload that to GoDaddy or one in one servers. Their servers have PHP installed, their servers have MySQL installed, their servers have Ruby or Perl or any of these other scripting languages that you need. All that you have to worry about is your application. Of course, that gets much more complicated once you go over to Google App Engine and some the more, more advanced things, but that's the, the basic concept. So now we're getting to basically probably the last service that I will be talking about is Metal as a Service. Now this is one of those really, really, really cool ideas that actually is pretty cutting edge. I'm not sure if it's bleeding edge, but it's pretty cutting edge. So some of you guys looking to create businesses out there really should listen to what I'm talking about right now because it really is a good business opportunity right now because not very many people actually actually offer this service. So when we're talking about metal as a service, what we are literally talking about is providing the server hardware as a service to clients. So this is not the same thing as what you would normally think about with cloud computing or virtualization where you install a hypervisor onto a server and then they spin up some kind of a instance of a server. And this isn't the same thing as a dedicated server. So for EliTheComputerGuy.com and a couple of other things that I do, we rent a dedicated server from a company called OneInOne.com. With that, I get a specific server, 12 gigs of RAM, a quad core processor, blah, 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 with a certain version of Linux on it. And then from that point, I can configure up. But with that, when you are purchasing something like a dedicated server, you have to use whatever operating systems are provided by the provider. So with oneinone.com, if you go with them, you can use like Server 2008 or Server 2012, Fedora, CentOS. If you wanted to use something else, tough luck. If you wanted to use free BSD on one of these services that you couldn't do it. If you wanted to install a hypervisor onto one of these dedicated services, servers, you couldn't do it. The reason is, is because although you're renting the dedicated server, it has to have a bare uh, minimum uh, installation on it before you are actually able to get access to it. The cool thing with Metal as a Service, it is the concept is that you are literally renting the physical box with nothing else on it. So this is where you would go to a provider and you would literally rent, it would be a quad core Xeon processor with so much RAM, so much hard drive, and that's it. There would not necessarily be sent OS on it. There would not necessarily be Windows on it. There wouldn't necessarily be anything on it. You are you are literally renting the metal as a service. So basically now, instead of having to have your own server rooms with your own equipment, your own server racks, your own HVAC, your all redundant power supply and your UPS and all of that kind of stuff, 
You can have the same thing sitting in somebody else's server room. So they are renting to you the metal as a service. Now, you may be wondering, Eli, why would you bother with that? If you can get virtual servers, if you can use infrastructure as a service, if you can even get dedicated servers, why would you run, want to rent or lease the bare metal as a service? Well, as you go through uh, with your companies, if, if you have a startup company or if you have a technology company and you start growing, what you are going to find is no matter what operating system distribution you use, it is probably not going to be optimized for whatever it is you're doing. So, you know, we all know with Windows, we all know with Windows, Windows hogs up a lot of extra resources to do things most of us really truly don't care about and would be happy if it didn't. But what a lot of people don't really is even with Linux, even with Linux, there are resources that are used, there are security vulnerabilities that are opened up simply because when you install the default installation of whatever Linux uh, you're going to be using, it installs a base uh, level uh, of applications and services. And a lot of times you don't need that. So imagine if you were a company where you want to spin out a lot of database servers and you want those database servers to run at the absolute optimum, the fastest they can possibly run. Well, you may want to go in to a distribution of an operating system and literally rip out all the crap that you don't want. You don't need Notepad. You don't need tar. You don't need a lot of these, these things. You just need that server to run as fast as possible to do a specific task, possibly do something like a database server. Because this becomes very important, especially when you start dealing with larger companies that are dealing with a larger load on their servers. Because when you rip out all of the crap you don't need on a, on a server's operating system, you can gain efficiencies. Now, this is not, you're not going to probably speed up the server by 200% or 500% or 1000%, right? That's not what, what the target you're going to hit. You may be able to sp uh, the, uh, actually speed up the server, though, by something like 5%. Now for you, especially if you haven't dealt with real server rooms, if you haven't dealt with real loads on servers, optimizing an operating system to get 5% uh, improvement probably doesn't sound like a big deal. But with companies, if you, if you have 20 servers up and running or 40 servers up and running, a 5% increase in speed can be very, 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 very significant. So with these companies, they may be looking to optimize the things, like I say, the operating systems that will be installed, how all of this will be configured, how all of this will be managed. And so all they want is the bare metal. They want the server, they want the hard drives, they want the RAM, they want the CPU, but they don't want anybody else to mess with the rest of it. They want to be able to build this thing from the ground up. And again, there can be a lot of reasons for this nowadays. Things like, again, efficiency, making sure that the resources on the server are optimized, but also issues such as compliance. So compliance is becoming a bigger and bigger deal within the uh, the corporate world. What compliance means is that you are running your IT systems to certain specifications for security and reliability. So as more and more companies start using cloud computers and servers and all that to run the infrastructure of their business, they have to make sure that that infrastructure is reliable enough for their industry. Now one of the problems if you go out and you use a, a, a standard instance of an operating system or you use a standard load of an operating system from one of these providers is you don't necessarily know all the security flaws. You haven't necessarily been able to sit down and do penetration testing and do hardening testing and do all of those things. So when you when you are leasing, let's say from one and onecom a dedicated server, you can't guarantee that, this, that the, the server operating system that has been installed is as hardened as it should be. Now again, for somebody like me, I don't care. Again, do good backups and you should be fine. For And this is one of the things you have to think about. For 98% of the business population, this type of, of concept doesn't matter. But for that 2%, it is very, very, very important. It is very important that they know that whatever operating system and software that's going to be installed on that server, it lives up to certain specifications. So that's why they would want to be able to rent that, that, that bare metal uh, as a service. So metal as a service. Now, one of the questions that you're going to be coming up then with you, you're going to be saying, or 
and got me saying, well, Eli, uh, I don't understand how you would interact with Metal as a Service then. Because, you know, when we think about dealing with these virtual computers, when we think about dealing with, uh, with cloud computers and all that, we have a basic interface to deal with. So basically, again, if you get a dedicated server or you get a virtual private server, they spin up the operating system and then they give you the login credentials. So basically, the company that you're buying the service from, they have already installed the instance of the operating system, they've already created the first user account, they then give you that information for that first user account and then you can figure it out however it is you want. So the question you may be asking is like, well, I don't, I don't understand that because if you're literally renting the metal and the metal is let's say five states away, well, wait a minute, but there's no operating system to interact with. And the metal is five states away, so you don't want to drive there. So, so I don't understand how you would configure it or work with it. Well, one of the cool things, not really new, but they're, but they're, they're, they're coming more into vogue, is something called IP KVM switches. So K, KVM switches, been around for forever, long, far longer than I've been in the computer industry, keyboard video mouse switches. So what these are, generally, when you're dealing with a server rack, is you plug all the servers in the rack into one KVM switch, and then you can press a button, and then when you press that button, that gives you access to the server from one keyboard, video, and mouse combination. So you have a monitor, you have a keyboard and mouse, and you say, oh, I need to deal with, uh, with server two, and you just hit the server two button and server two pops up. Oh, I need to deal with server 10. You click the server 10 button and uh, the server 10 pops up. Well, with KVM, they now have IP KVM. What this means is that you can deal with that server from the basic input output, so the basic video, keyboard, and mouse, and you can do that over an IP connection. So you can either open that up through a web browser and be able to log in, or you can open it up through some kind of terminal session or, or some kind of application. So basically, you can be sitting in your, in your office five states away from this bare metal. The company that you're dealing with will plug in the KVM switch and whatever else, and then basically you can hit the on or they can hit the on button or you may have some kind of remote way to hit the on button and from there it will literally load into a bios screen then from there depending on, on, on what the uh, the service provider has for you you can go and you can install your your uh, your your operating system and do all of your configurations but literally you have remote access to the lowest level of that server. So you could literally reboot that server and go into uh, the BIOS and change BIOS configuration settings. You literally have that ability, whether you're five states away or you know on an entirely different continent. Now, especially with PDUs, so the, the, the power distribution units, basically what most people would call surge protectors, even those have remote access so that you can do things like power cycle the server. Because again, the question where you're like, well, Eli, I don't understand. If, if you have metal as a service, if you have that metal and you do something wrong and it freezes up, how do you force it to restart? Because again, you know, you're installing operating systems, you're doing all kinds of wacky stuff. Sometimes it'll freeze. And if you have access to the metal, what are you going to do? Well, with these surge protectors, these power dis uh, distribution units, you can actually power cycle them, again, remotely. So this is the cool stuff with metal as a service. I think this is going to become a much more prominent thing. Right now, this is one of those things that it is offered. By, by companies, uh, you don't see it around a lot. But it is something that you should be looking at and you should be thinking about. Because again, this way you can have you can have your own custom servers that have been hardened up to your specifications, but they are sitting in somebody else's data center. You don't have to worry about it. Just like with all of these commoditized items, it is less expensive for you to be able to rent this service from somebody else that can have a thousand or five thousand or twenty thousand of these servers up and running. Basically, they, they, they can have five or ten technicians running around making sure all the metal is doing what this metal is supposed to do versus if you had servers in each one of your individual offices and having people run around and deal with that kind of stuff. So that's the basic concept of metal as a service. Again, all it is at the end of the day is you are literally leasing or renting that bare metal. So you've got a server with absolutely no operating system on it. That is what you're leasing. That allows you to do a lot of really cool, sexy, amazing 
cool stuff. Um, and with the modern technology, like I say, it's, it's actually very, very, very doable today. It's one of those things when you got to start thinking, when we think about the cloud, I mean, that's a whole, one of the problems with us old technicians, right, is we're used to touching stuff. We like, you know, when we work on computers, we're used to keyboards. We're used to like plugging away and we've got the server in front of us and we've got the router in front of us. So we got all this stuff in front of us. So like mentally, uh, we think about all this equipment like being in our server room, being in our office, being in our facility. And so what you have to realize is in this modern world that we're in, you can have the exact same functionality that, that you would have if the equipment was in your building, but it can be somewhere else it can be provisioned, given to you very quickly, it can be given to you very inexpensively, and it can be provided as securely or more securely than what you could do yourself. Again, a lot of people, you know, I'm, I'm starting to talk, you know, talking about things like metal as a service, and everybody gets worried about security. Everybody's like, oh, how do I, how do I know, Eli? How do I know my servers are going to be secure? How do I know that data center is going to be secure? Well, one, you do something called due diligence. You, you actually make sure that the company that you're dealing with is a legitimate company, you probably, if you're going to be running your business off this stuff, you should fly out to their data center at least once to actually take a look at it and make sure they've got all the, the security stuff and all that. But beyond that, what a lot of people don't realize is how insecure their facilities actually are. They always worry about how insecure the cloud provider is, and they somehow completely ignore just the crappy, 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 crappy security that they have on their facility. Again, I'm here in Baltimore, Maryland, uh, in the Baltimore City. We have an incredibly high crime rate. And so one of the real problems that you have is you can have antivirus on your servers, you can have your firewalls on your servers, you can have your intrusion detection on the servers, you can have your UPS on the servers, and some crackhead could break into your building, literally rip the server out of the server rack, and walk away with it and try to sell it for 25 bucks at the local pawn shop. And when they can't sell it at the local pawn shop, then they'll get pissed and they'll just throw it in a ditch and keep walking. Again, that's a nice thing with these data centers, at least with that kind of physical security. You would be surprised, many times they have much, 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 much better physical security and the rest of this than, than you have. Take a real, honest, hard look at the security in your facility, and if you're honest about it, you probably know that it's, it's probably pretty bad. <laughs> it's probably... Probably, probably your servers would be better off in, a, in, in some kind of hosted uh, solution. So that's all there is for, uh, for Metal as a Service. As you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy. Today's class was Metal as a Service, M-A-A-S, Introduction. As always, I enjoy teaching this class and look forward to seeing you in the next one.